In Coventry, one in five households is in fuel poverty, defined as living in hard to heat homes and finding yourself below the poverty line once you've paid for energy and housing. The picture across England is not much better. An estimated 3 million households, 13%, were in fuel poverty last year, despite government help with bills. But the amount fuel costs would need to come down for a household not to be struggling with those bills, what's called the fuel poverty gap, jumped from £348 on average to £417, an increase of £69. And well over a third of households, nearly 9 million, spent more than 10% of their income after housing costs on energy bills, up from around 6.5 million the year before. This is the Holbrooks Community Centre. Half term's been busy. It's somewhere where people can come to get warm, get a free hot meal, and a bag of shopping for five pounds. We use the flour, don't we? Yeah. Graham's energy bills are heading for 300 pounds a month. The battle to pay them will be made slightly easier from this month with his first state pension payment. Now I'm a pensioner, or officially a pensioner, things will ease up a bit, but it's going to be 260, 280 a month just on gas and electric. So that's over a quarter of it gone straight away. It's thank God for your pension at the moment then, isn't it? We did have some savings which we've been drawing on, but they're obviously depleting now. So this is why we've been using this food bank, because otherwise we'd end up with nothing. When the energy price cap went up in January, bills went up 5%. Mark Graham spends hours on the phone to the companies trying to get people temporary credit. You've been here a couple of years. How would you compare the beginning of this year to the beginning of last year? So we're having a lot more people coming in for support and also with regards to applying for benefits. Nobody can afford to live at the moment. And people say you've got the cost of living payments, but they always end up going on debts because people have borrowed to get electric and gas and then they get the, the borrow on the promise of the cost of living payment. Um, but yeah, it's getting worse. It's not getting better. Michelle Williams is employed here as a support worker, but she's in much the same boat as those she helps. I go through it myself, worrying about children's baths and how much that's costing you, how much you know you can get away with not putting heating on for. Um, they eat incessantly. <laughs> this is why somewhere like this is really good because obviously, yes, I've helped with the running of it, but I'm actually, a, I have to use the service myself. So uh, we're finding more and more that people that have got jobs um, that should be okay aren't. And the conversations you have with people here yeah. in, your, in your day job, mm -hmm. I imagine that's pretty upsetting sometimes when people are in It can crisis. be, it, it can be upsetting. Um, you have to sort of set yourself aside from that a little bit and not emotionally log into everything you, you see because at the end of the day you have to to find a solution, you have to be clear-headed, but it's become normality. That's the scary thing about it now. It's not, um, so people are so worried about how they appear. Nobody wants to talk to the news, for example, about being poor, but everybody is. The government says it's helped struggling households to the tune of over three and a half thousand pounds on average. But in Holbrooks, more and more people are asking for help, unable to keep hunger and the cold at bay.